Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit more abstract using symmetry. So let's get going. Alright, so for this project, we're going to be using construction paper and some squares. Now, if you don't have construction paper, it's easy just to color a sheet of paper all uh, one color of your choosing. Or you can do like a rainbow color, it doesn't matter to me. But I have a construction paper for my own convenience, but we need to make it a square. So in order to make it a square, it's actually quite simple. Um, in order to make any uh, simple square, all you gotta do is fold uh, one corner and try to match the top edge with the side of the, of the paper, just like so. But since I want my square to be a tad bit smaller, I am gonna trim it a little bit. So let me just fold one end in a bit, maybe about this much. And then I'm gonna cut it off. So I kind of I kind of just like guessed how long I want my uh, my square to be. So it's about maybe almost the size of a sharpie. I don't know. So anyways, this is scrap, so I can toss that to the side. I'll recycle it later. Now I do want to turn this into a rectangle. Sorry, a square. So all I'm gonna do again is take one corner and place it so the top edge matches one of the sides. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make sure my top edge matches the side, like that, I'm gonna fold it best I can, and then I'm just gonna trim off the end right here. Just like so, ta-da! And just like this, so this isn't the square, it's this one right here. Unfortunately, this has a crease on it, but it's okay. So over here, I have my square, which is great. So uh, before I show you guys what to do, I do have some examples here to the size you guys can take a look at. So this one is from a student from long ago, and this one is mine. Now the idea is you want to make sure that you have at least two shapes on each side of the square, and you're going to reflect them out so it symbolizes symmetry. So uh, I'm going to show you guys an example on this side of the page right here. And I'm going to use um, maybe just like a simple marker here. And since this paper has a crease already, I'm going to create a line in the middle. And let's talk about how things reflect properly. So if I have a shape like this, kind of looks like a mustache, kind of. Uh, so I'm going to do the exact same shape right here, as best I can. Let's see which one is the correct way to reflect it. Okay. So we got this one right here. And then we got this one right here. Which way do you think is the correct way to reflect this? If you guys pick the bottom one, it's incorrect. It's actually the top one. Notice how it reflects completely so the top points match. And also the bumps match as well. Which is great. Now the bottom one, notice how they're completely opposite. So this one definitely can't mirror to the other side as well. So notice how this corner is different from this corner and notice how the bumps are on two opposite sides. So obviously this isn't the correct way how to reflect something. So before we get started, let me see if you guys have the square. And again, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do an example with if you guys don't have construction paper. So let me just not toss it, but let me just put this aside. I'll show you guys what to do if you guys don't have construction paper. So here we go. Alright, so here's my blank sheets of paper. I'm just going to color it gently with like uh, random colors. Uh, I'm going to place it underneath somewhere so I don't ruin it because I am going to color a little bit off the edge. And I think I'm going to do this color right here. Maybe lime green. I'll do lime green. So I'm just going to color it lightly like this. And then I'm going to switch directions or turn the paper so it's nice and green. Just like so. And I'm not doing the whole page, just a little bit. So again, this is something you guys can do if you don't have construction paper. See, we're just trying to be creative here while remote learning. All right, so that's that. And I might as well do the other side as well. So here I go. It's gonna take us a while. So I might have to speed up this section of the video. Oh, crinkled my paper to tad bit. All right, I am gonna add a little bit more color to this. 
because it is looking kind of light and I want you guys to be able to see it a little better. There we go. This true green is looking a tad bit better for the example for today. And it's gonna have a cool effect to it. So this is actually kind of cool that we're doing more than one color. So this is actually gonna turn out better than just plain construction paper in my opinion. All right, I'm almost done coloring it. I gotta do the other side now. <laughs> now that it's both sides. All right, here we go. Whew, my arm is getting tired. I don't, I don't know about you guys. <laughs> oh, went off the page a lot. <laughs> That's not good. All right, I think I did a pretty good job and I did both sides, so it kind of makes the symmetry a little bit easier to see. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch spots and I'll turn this paper into a square sheet of paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold a little bit of the end in, maybe about this much. And then I'm just gonna trim off that side, just like so. Perfect. And then in order to make it a square, I'm just gonna take one corner and make sure that I pull it down this way so the top edge matches the side edge. So here we go. Notice how it's matching the edges over here. Boom. And then all I'm gonna do is trim off the excess paper. And now I have a square sheet of paper now. See, perfect square and it's colored on both sides, which is great. Now, next step. What you're gonna do um, is you're gonna make some patterns uh, using either a pencil, or in my case, I'm gonna be using a marker. That way it's a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna be using this marker right here. And you wanna make sure you're doing patterns that, or sorry, shapes that don't go all the way across. And you wanna make sure they don't, you don't do these shapes on the corners because corners will make the reflections not work. And if you do it too big, you will have no space for any of the other shapes on the other sides of the square. So let's do some easy ones. Maybe I'll do a half circle here. Maybe I'll do kind of like a wavy line right there like that. Maybe on one side, I'll do a triangle. Maybe I'll do two bumps on this side like that. Maybe I'll do hmm, a lightning bolt or maybe a wavy line like this. And then I'll do a lightning bolt right here. Lightning bolts are a little bit harder to cut, so be very careful. And then on this side, I have some room, so why don't I do Another wavy line like this. And then maybe the castle lines like that. There, it's a little more advanced. All right, now that I have everything, I want you guys to keep in mind that you're gonna be using all the paper. You won't have any scraps from here on out. So you wanna make sure you keep everything that you cut. So next step, you're gonna cut all eight shapes and then we'll go from there. Make sure you keep all your scraps because you guys should not have scraps from this point on. All right, so here we go. And make sure you save your pieces. Sometimes it might be a little bit easier if you guys organize them properly. So this all came from the same side. So I'll put it on this side of my page. Let's cut again. So again, you wanna make sure you don't make too hard of shapes because you, uh, you will be cutting them later on. So I don't think it'll be a smart idea if you do a really hard and complicated shape and then you're gonna have a hard time cutting it later due to how hard you made it. So I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm gonna keep cutting here. I just finished my second side. Keep it with that piece. All right, let's do this one right here. Actually, no, let's do the hard one. Let's do the lightning bolt. The reason why I think it's hard because it has jagged edges and it's possible that I might cut off some important parts by accident. But in my case, I didn't. It was great. Keep right there. That third side is almost done. And you definitely want to keep organized, especially if the shapes starting to look very similar to each other. There you go. Because I know these, this one and this one might look super similar. So you want to make sure you keep those very separate and understand where they came from. All right. We're almost done here. 
this is a total of eight shapes, two shapes per side. It should work out pretty well. All right, here we go. Done. So I kept all my pieces. And what you can do is I want you to take a glue stick. You can glue this either like this, or we can kind of make like a diamond to make it look more like this. So here are two examples right here. I kind of glued these diamond shape instead. Um, or you can glue it like, you know, just normal, like a normal square. The reason why people glue it like a diamond is so the reflections can have more room to come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out where everything goes. Um, so if I'm going to hold it like a diamond instead, so maybe I'll go like this. Uh, you want to make sure you plan it accordingly. So maybe, um, so this one goes here, this one goes here. Um, let's see, this wavy one goes on this side. This lightning bolt goes on that side. This one goes here and here. This one goes here and this one goes here. Now, once you're ready, um, just place them aside. And I didn't organize them properly when it comes to which way it goes. There we go. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a glue stick and glue my little shape on. So here we go. Why don't I glue on this side? And I'm just going to spot glue because I don't want it to dry too quickly on me on certain ends. It looks like the other side's uh, drying already, so I have to go back. All right, I'm gonna go as quick as I can. Make sure it's in the right spots. I'm pretty sure my lightning bolt was on the top left-hand side. All right, and there we go. All right, I'm gonna push down as hard as I can. Now here comes the fun part. It's kinda like a game. Now this, if you put this over here, that's incorrect, right? If you put it like this, it's correct. So let's do another one. So before I do that, let's glue it on before I forget. Here we go. One out of the eight pieces is done. Awesome, right? Really easy project. Let's try another one. So this one came from here. So if it was like this, that's incorrect. You want to make sure you ref reflect out. Now, let's see. Is this correct? No, because notice how the points are pointing in different directions. This one's pointing this way. This one's pointing this way. So the best way to do this project is to put it back where it belongs, like how it is, like, here, like this. And then glue on top. And then just flip it over. Just like so. There. Pretty simple, right? So I'm going to keep going. I know where some pieces go. So this one goes right here. Like this. This one came from over here. So this one goes over here like this. Let's see, this one goes right here. This one came from there. So I'm gonna flip it. Oh, I got a little bit of glue on my finger. That's okay. This one came from this bottom section like that. And last but not least, this one came from over here. All right, this project is completely done. If you do want to edit it a little bit to make it look a little more cleaner, you can outline the shapes a little bit better. But otherwise, this project is done, and that's basically it. So again, here's my one that I did it for you guys, and here's my examples from the past. And I hope you guys enjoyed this project. But anyways, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys next one. Bye-bye.